If I traded it all, if I gave So welcome back, everyone. And as I'm sitting here on the radio, I'm getting a phone call here. I don't know if that is Solar Sandy, but that's okay. I know she's on her way. I know that they're all really nervous because Solar Sandy... Uh, was supposed to be on at 3.30, and she is running late. But I'm going to tell you that Solar Sandy, who's been on my show for years, has been on a mission. I know you all know. I know you know it. But you know what? A lot of people, they hear this kind of stuff, and it takes you to hear it over and over and over again before you finally do something about paying less money for a bill that you're already paying way too much money on. Solar Sandy wasn't even going to be on the show today. Let me tell you something. She called me up, uh, I think it was like... Um, Monday and she said Carol I got something really big going on and if you can get me on I'd really appreciate it and here I get her on and she's not here well anyway when she's probably listening right now on the radio laughing <laughs> but um, um, so Solar Sandy has been on a mission uh, for the last couple of years that she met me and did you hear what I said she comes walking in here with a little Santa hat and looks adorable okay there you go Solar Sandy I was just talking Solar about Santa. you Solar Sandy, uh, Solar Santa Sandy. There you go. Wait, let me get this in front of you. You know, this is Friday. It so is we're just Friday. having like a crazy day. But you know what? I've been just talking about you, and I was telling them how you weren't even supposed to be on the show today. I know. But you're here because you said to me, Carol, I got something big I got to talk about. I have so many wonderful things to share with you, and I'm glad that we have 45 minutes today. I know, it's rather, than, fun? rather than 30 minutes, because we never seem to get everything out in the 30 minutes that we usually do have. So, Merry Christmas to everyone, and just I just want to say for all of our listeners, Carol, we've been on the radio now for two years together, and you know my story, but we're going to tell it again. You know, a little over five years ago, when my daughter called me and needed help paying her power bill, I was on a fixed income due to the bad accident that I had. And her bill was over $500. And I just sat down and said, my gosh, I can't help my own daughter pay her power bill. At the time, she was 23 with my two little grandchildren. And I said, this bill is never going to go away. And it's never going to go down. It's only going to continue to go up. And... If I can't help her pay this now, what's going to happen, you know, year after year after year? So, you know, like any mom and a grandma, I just said, I've got to figure out a solution that's going to help my, my daughter. So I didn't know anything about solar. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how much it cost. I didn't know a single thing. So I called a couple of companies, and as nice as these young men were, they were just in an awful big hurry to put solar panels up on my daughter's roof and couldn't answer the questions to my satisfaction and my level of comfort. This is going to be the power source on my, my daughter's and my grandchildren's home. And so I, I sat down and I gave it a lot of thought and reading and all the rest of it. And I, I realized there this was just math and back you know back when i was a nurse when back in my day i'm 57 carol so back in my day there was no smartphones and computers that dispensed the medicine um, we had to drop the medicine we had to double check the doctor's orders to make sure that we were giving the right dosage to our patients and so there was a formula the body weight um, height uh, for the person's body mass and that's how we double checked to make sure because if we had administered the wrong dosage of medication it was our our license on the line not the doctors and so we used to have to really really be careful with that so it was a mathematical formula and so I sat down as I had given this a lot of thought and consideration um, and I figured out how, how much power did Chelsea use for the last 12 months and I jotted that 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 number down and then at nighttime, of course, you know, when the sun would go down, the panels weren't going to be producing any electricity. So she was going to need to buy some electricity from the power company. Um, she still needed to be connected to the power company. So I did that calculation, and then I figured out, 
Okay, most power companies have more than one uh, rate plan, so I had to find which was the optimum rate plan for her to be on for the maximum savings and the maximum benefits of, of going solar. Jotted that down, and that's when I created the kilowatt worksheet sitting at the kitchen table on a yellow pad of paper. And so that was the very first kilowatt worksheet that I ever did was for my own daughter. And um, so the first, and, and I, was, I wasn't in Hawaii at the time because due to my accident, I had to leave Hawaii for medical treatment in Las Vegas. And I was on the phone with her and the first fellow and the second fellow were just like, well, that's not how we do this. And like I said, they were just in a, such a big, awful rush to like just get her signed up and get this done and all the rest of it. I said, no, 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 you, those two were disqualified. The third fellow, nice fellow, he said, well, I've never done it this way. And I said, probably you haven't. You're not a mom and a grandma that if this doesn't work, I can't afford to pay my daughter's power bill. I need to make sure this is the right solution, that I'm helping my daughter, not hurting her. And um, he said, okay, I'm not sure about this. And I said, do it this way, and or don't do it at all, basically. And um, so he did. And uh, so when Ch Chelsea Solar Panels got put on her, her home, Carol, my formula worked, and it worked better than what we had anticipated um, and my numbers were better better than what we had done on paper and so my daughter said mom she was so grateful and I'm going to tell because we have a little bit more time today because of my accident and because of what I'd been through I hadn't been able to financially help my kids my daughter my son for a very long time because I had been sick for a long long time you know I had a bad accident I fell down an elevator I was going to ask you if it's okay I mean you people may. Don't, I know you said I had a bad I don't think in two years we've ever actually said it on the air because we never really have time so you may you, you let may. me tell you what happened I mean and I don't under, I don't know how See, it happened no. but because no money not many people do that but she fell down an elevator shaft and it must have been awful it was um, I was on the fourth floor at the Honolulu parking garage and I walked into an elevator the door was open and the elevator looked like it was there and I fell and the elevator was on the first floor so I was um, told if I lived I would never walk again mm -hmm. and I was a single mother of a three-year-old and a five-year-old and I said to the doctors that day um, you know dying's just not an option not today or anytime soon because all they have is me so I was in a wheelchair for 14 years I wasn't paralyzed but everything in my spine and my spinal cord was compressed compressed and literally breathing hurt and I had many 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 surgeries um, I have a steel plate and four screws in my neck my whole back is fused and um, so and then I survived all of that and then the doctor put in what's called a intrathecal morphine pump to get me off of the IV morphine because it wasn't working and um, this one month when I went in to get the pump filled this particular day um, instead of the physician's assistant filling it, the doctor said he was going to fill it. So I was taught in nursing school, you don't argue with the doctor. So I um, went in and got up on the exam table. I didn't. It was just he and I in the room. I didn't have to get undressed because um, I just had to lift up my blouse. And the, the thing of it was, he was supposed to put a bullseye, um, like a little cover over like where the port was to get the needle and the medicine into the canister. And he thought he was a hot shot and he didn't need to do that. So he missed four times. And you have to understand, I was in horrific, horrific pain on every single day on a level eight, nine, or ten, and sometimes more. So um, I sat up and I pointed at him. I said, Do that to me one more time. <laughs> I, that's pretty much it. I said, You know, you, I said, Jeffrey. And he knew I was a retired nurse and then my mother was a retired nurse. And um, nurses aren't supposed to address doctors by their first name. They just don't like it. It's disrespectful. But they think they're God. But and if there's any doctors out there, I know there's some really great doctors out there. But anyways, this doctor had a, a, a pretty big ego. So I said, you know, Jeffrey, 
if you don't get this needle this time, I'm going to take the gosh darn needle. I'm going to do it my gosh darn self because it doesn't appear that you know what you're gosh darn well doing. And I might have said it a little stronger than that, but we're on air, so I'm going to be very Thank you. careful. <laughs> you're welcome, girl. <laughs> so he made a face at me. He turned around. He came back with the fifth needle, and um, he... Uh, he got he didn't put the bullseye but he got the needle and I just said thank you Jesus got back in my wheelchair and I went home that night this was Thursday morning Thursday evening I called my mom after every doctor's appointment and I you know because she was a nurse and I was a nurse we used to discuss what happened with me and so I said you know mom I'm not feeling very well and she goes well you probably wouldn't be Sandra she called me Sandra solar Sandra um, so I said you I said solar Sandra hold on sorry. tight yeah. we got to go to a break okay so here's Stay what we're tuned. gonna do we're gonna uh, we got to go to a break because I want to know exactly what happened okay. I've never heard this story let me tell you I'm excited about hearing it too so we're gonna go to a break let me tell you something about solar Sandy she's on a mission for you guys that's what she's here for and she's gonna be telling you some exciting news about what's going on you can check her out on her website it's ask ask solar sandy.com hang tight we'll be back in just a minute i can't wait if I trade it all, if I welcome it back everyone and we are talking with solar sandy and uh what a day what it a day a, it's a, it's a good day, day. it and is a good and, okay. and we've been talking to you a little bit about your story i love so, listening so, to that so so yes yeah, so where do we leave off so you had uh, just gone to the doctors, yeah. and your mommy was saying that yeah. you might, well, you're going to feel bad. Right. So I said, Mom, I said, she was, well, after being poked five times, you probably would feel kind of awful. And I said, no, Mom, it's something different. She says, well, you better get yourself to the, the hospital then. And that was a Thursday evening. I'll tell you what happened. She, um, she didn't hear this. Uh, it's from, you know, this is what happened. Um, the fifth needle that the, the doctor um, injected, he didn't clear the air, and he injected air into the interthecal morphine pump. Oh. And I had air bubbles going to my brain, so I had what's called an air um, an air embolism to the brain, and I was pronounced dead for three minutes and forty three seconds. So I saw people on a good damn blonde and brain damage. <laughs> so, and so, what does this have to do with the price of power in Arizona? Um, I was on Social Security Disability for many, many years, and I was very, very sick for a very long time. So when my daughter called me, I hadn't been able to, like I said, help my children financially for a very, very long time. I was very sick, very sick. I mean, I passed away, and my children went through this at a young age. They were still teenagers when I went through this. So that my daughter was reaching out and asking me for help. This was the first time, Carol, in a long, long time that I was able to figure out a, a solution for her that would impact her life so significantly because it's her power bill. It's never going to go away. It's always going to continue to go up. She was ever so grateful. And I'm going to tell you something. It gave me my sense of purpose back as a mother mm -hmm. um, that I had been able to help my daughter um, so profoundly and it wasn't just about what it was it was just what I was able to do in the bond as a mom doing something for her daughter so my daughter said mom she goes you were really good at explaining this and she said if it wasn't for you I wouldn't have done this because she trusted me and uh, boy oh boy when those numbers came like I knew because it was math and because I'm mathematical that it was gonna work but I still was holding my breath mm -hmm. and she said mom this is saving me even more than than you predicted and she was so ecstatic about this she sh like in her neighborhood at the time a little over five years ago there was only I think two houses that had solar now there's only two houses that don't because of me and because of my formula and that Chelsea, she would tell the neighbors, oh, my mom helped me figure this out. And her neighbors would call and, and I would help them. And I wasn't doing this and I was just getting better. I was still sick and I was still getting better. And I was happy to help people with their formula. And so now... I use the same formula for all my, and that's why I call the people that I work with, they become part of my solar family. Solar is my mission and my ministry. It is not a business to me. It is, it's given me my life back, and it's given me a sense of purpose. I could not go back to nursing because of my injuries, and I loved being a nurse. I loved, loved, loved being a nurse. I loved taking care of people. I love making sure that people are okay. And so, Carol, we've touched on these things before when we've been on the radio. 
but we've never had this amount of time because we've always got to get you know right. the, get but to that's the, funny because i've always event. said you know of course you want to make people comfortable and that's mm-hmm. part of you know being in your home and being comfortable and being able to use your energy whenever you want right and people don't realize this carol um this year, APS has had some of the most significant increases that we have ever going to see. I was talking to somebody last night, and they said, what happened between last year and this year? I said, the power rates changed. The same power you were buying, basically renting from APS last year, they're selling it to you differently, and it's a whole big, big change. People, I, we, we talked about this in the early part of the year. I said, people with a two or $250 bill could easily see their bill be $475, $500, 100% increase, if, depending on which rate plan they, they chose or APS recommended for them. We are still, I'm just starting to see the impact of the full uh, weight of this, this increase because um, if people were on budget billing, in um in in the beginning of the year may 1st when uh these increases came out there was only they didn't have 12 months of your bills on the new rate plans some people didn't see their budget billing going uh, going up some people did um but the ones that didn't see their budget billing going up and even the ones that did could right now this very time of year and i ask everybody who's on budget billing go and check because a lady listened to me the other day on my my other radio show and she said sandy you're right i have a 900 hundred dollar settled amount that i owe to aps so in fact her budget billing instead of being 320 dollars a month she should have been paying 425 dollars if she doesn't pay that 900 dollars by december 5th she will be taken off budget billing and the thing of it is everyone all of our families listening this will not be the last aps increase so you'll pay that settle up amount and in a in a year, two or three, our bills will go up again. They'll add another fee. They'll add another surtax, tax or surcharge. That's an unpublished rate increase, and they do it all the time. Four hundred eighty-eight million dollars in profits last year. Now listen. Everybody in business is supposed to make money, but when it comes to people's health and well-being, about the ability to live comfortably and affordably in their own home, Carol, it's just. That's why I'm so passionate about what I do. This is not a business to me. I am so passionate about helping people understand this is your power bill. You're going to pay for power one way or the other. You might as well put more of your hard-earned money back in your pocket because APS and SRP certainly don't need any more of our money. And I want people to live comfortably. We work so hard to have our homes, to spend time with our family, holidays or otherwise. I want people to realize power, second to our house, is the second biggest expense we'll have in a lifetime. An average home today, APS, SRP, will spend in the next 20 years between eighty dollars to $100,000 on their power costs. Carol, I can cut that in half. And, and usually, and then some. And the way it works is the same formula that I did for Chelsea, for Chelsea's house. I want my APS families to have all the power they need. Their daytime power consumption, their nighttime power consumption will be covered. And I want them to have, what do we say? A, a smidge more. A smidge more. Because APS is still buying. A lot of people thought that that got discontinued. No, it's continued. They're still buying the ex- extra power that you're producing on your roof. So let's say today your panels have been up there for a month, and I've designed your system, and it's producing 100 kilowatts up there today. Well, because it's the daytime, you're going to only use your daytime kilowatts that the system's producing. So let's say that's 40 kilowatts you use. Well, now you've got 60 left over. What happens to those? APS is buying those, and they're buying them for 11.6 cents per kilowatt. So now at the end of this month, if you've had your panels on for 30 days, and we're going to read out bills in a minute, um, you're going to have a really nice credit on your bill this month, let's say $352. That's one of my bills. So then you will not owe APS one penny. You will have your bill paid 
and you still have this $352 credit. That $352 credit rolls forward to the next month, and the same thing happens again. You produce 100 kilowatts a day, you use 40 every day, you sell 60 back, and now at the end of that month, your bill is paid, and you have another credit on your bill. And now the credit is $488.75. Carol? $508.34. Okay, so I was off by a few dollars. And it's so, upside down. That's so why. then it rolls forward, and this, Carol, is in the heat of the summer. People are like, oh, how can that be? I said, because it's my formula that I've been using for now almost. Well, if you want to include my daughter, I've been doing this over five years now because I, I created this formula for my daughter. And in the in the meantime, my families that work with me under this 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 program with APS will not have a power bill in 2019. They will get a statement from APS, but they won't owe APS any money. At the end of this year, my families that are working with me that followed my formula are getting money back, and some of them are getting checks back for over a thousand. Some of them are going to get even more than that. But the way that I've designed the system is your panels that are producing the power that you need to live comfortably in your own home is not only paying your power bill, but it's paying for your panels too. So I can reduce your cost of your power significantly. Increase the value of your home. And for all the people who say, well, I might move in two or three years, guess what? You pack up your furniture. You don't leave your furniture at your house, do you? You can pack up the panels and you can take those with you. So there's lots of reasons that people, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Every single day for the rest of our lives, no matter which home you're in, you will need power. And if you go to APS and SRP and look at their website and look at their rate plans, um, you're paying anywhere between 20 and 30 cents for your on-peak power. And that's not including the fees and the taxes and all these weird charges, the demand fees and all the rest of it. It when you're working with me, my formula boils down to you're paying between seven and a half and eight and a half cents per kilowatt for your power for the rest of your life. Because your panels are now your power source. And yes, you're still connected to the grid. Yes, because at nighttime when the sun goes down, you still need to buy some power for that. I make sure you're producing enough for your daytime and your nighttime and that you're on the right rate plan so that you're going to get the maximum savings and benefits. Her phone number, <clears throat> it's 623-850-8226. It's AskSolarSandy.com.